So you have a normal pulp, right? And if the K starts and gets deeper, right? Slowly the pulp starts to react to that and brings more blood into the pulp, right? And we call that congestion, right? Or hyperemia. So increase of the blood supply to the pulp. Okay, so that's called hyperemia or congestion. And if it keeps going to a point where it becomes acute inflammation, then we call that acute pulpitis. So now we have acute inflammation in the pulp. So there's all those chemical mediators from inflammation released in the pulp. There's also neurogenic inflammation. There's acute inflammation. And inflammation means there's swelling, right, edema. So that means the pulp is trying to swell, but it's confined inside a hard structure, right? So there's going to be a lot of pressure because it can't push out, right? And that's going to apply pressure to the nerves as well. And eventually, eventually that's going to cause pain. And then eventually it will go through necrosis in two methods. There's liquefaction across the necrosis, which means the pulp basically just gets destroyed under the pressure. And there's also ischemic necrosis, where there's less blood supply coming in because the pressure is actually closing the veins and blood is not able to leave. So there's two, in two ways, we'll talk about it later, there's necrosis. And then that's the usually, that's kind of the pathway we think, okay, of what's happening to the pulp. Okay? So sometimes after hyperemia or after there's some inflammation, or let's say like in congestion, it doesn't always turn into acute pulpitis. Sometimes it could become, sometimes you get internal resorption. So that's kind of a form of reaction in the pulp. It could, get, it could create some sort of chronic inflammation with odontoclasts that are formed and break down the dentin inside. So we call that internal resorption. So that's kind of in the same class where acute pulpitis is, and you're gonna see why, okay? But it's just a different reaction. It's not necrosis, it's not normal. You don't call it hyperemia. It's like in this area. But instead of an acute pulpitis, you have some sort of chronic resorptive pulpitis. Okay, another thing that could happen is chronic hyperplastic pulpitis, which means that there's actually a big enough hole in the tooth that allows the pressure of the pulp to react outward and create a granuloma, because it's connective tissue at the end. It's like creating, it has, it has somewhere to relieve its pressure, that, that cavity in the tooth, right? So n those all three are kind of in one area. Now, this is all histological diagnosis. And this is hopefully gonna clear a lot of things out for you because we usually use these terms and we forget they're, they're kind of like histological terms, pathological terms maybe, on a patholo histopathology level. Clinically, endodontics, we could, we could look at different terms. So the clinical diagnosis for these, when we say hyperemia, when, when the tooth has congestion, a lot of blood supply coming in as a reaction to irritation, without it, when it does, if it didn't yet go into acute pulpitis and it's still here, if we remove the cause of this hyperemia, it will actually go back to normal. Okay, that's what we realize. When, when the tooth is at this level of histology and pathology, if we remove the cause, it goes back to normal. So clinically, we call that reversible pulpitis. You see? So clinically, we call that reversible pulpitis. And in this stage, it doesn't go back, even if we remove the cause. Whether it's acute pulpitis, internal resorption, or hyperplastic pulpitis. So technically, all of these need root canal treatment. And because they need root canal treatment, we say clinically, they're all irreversible pulpitis. Okay? Now, some books will tell you, or mo mainly most books will say, irreversible pulpitis is symptomatic and asymptomatic. And under the symptomatic you have acute pulpitis, because it's painful. And under asymptomatic you have internal resorption and hyperplastic. So that's another way of looking at those two. Because you're gonna say irreversible pulpitis usually is painful, yeah. But the symptomatic type is this, clinically, and the asymptomatic are these two, that are less painful. Now in AFK, usually when they say irreversible pulpitis, they're referring to acute pulpitis. Okay? So you want to know both, the, like the, the proper textbook 
concepts and also what they're using in AFK. So in AFK, when they want to say internal resorption, they usually say internal resorption. They don't say asymptomatic irreversible pulpitis. If they want to say hyperplastic, they'll say hyperplastic. They won't usually say, or they'll say pulp polyp. They won't say asymptomatic irreversible. They may say acute, or they may say irreversible. Usually when they say irreversible, they mean the acute. However, if they bring a question saying, all the following status of the pulps are irreversible, and then they bring hyperplastic, internal, acute, hyperemia, except you would say hyperemia. It's the only one that's not irreversible. That's the only one that's reversible. You see what I mean? Okay. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and then when it reaches necrosis, what's the treatment for that? Also root canal treatment. Right? So we call this necrosis. So how come necrosis is not part of irreversible pulpitis? Why don't we just throw it in there as well? Right? Because everything under irreversible pulpitis is vital still. See the difference? So everything here is still vital. So the root, the, the, the pulp in internal resorption, vital. The pulp in hyperplastic pulp, still vital. You call it vital. It's not normal, but it's vital. It's not necrotic. Okay, so that's why the necrosis has its own classification. Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. So let's look at pulpal diagnosis first before we go to periapical. So in a normal pulp, if I stimulate the tooth, maybe with cold, what, should, what words would they use to, to tell me this is normal? Right? They may say things like slight pain that subsides within two, one to two seconds after removal of the stimulus. That tells you that the, tooth is, the pulp is normal. They may say the pulp is within normal limits to cold testing. They may say that. I'm trying to tell you what they may say in the question. 